Hi, welcome to the new tutorial video for Radar, a new high-density 8-channel envelope generator designed by Erogenous Tones. The name Radar stands for Repeating, or LFO, AD, or AR. The goal of Radar was to have a large number of envelopes available in the smallest space possible. This pairs really well with other modules that have 8 lanes like Gatestorm, VC8, and Levitate. Radar has three modes of operation, envelope mode, quadrature mode, and octature mode, as you can see here by the system settings. In this video, we're going to look at envelope mode, so be sure the system mode switch is pushed all the way into the upward position. Envelope mode is used to generate eight independent envelope outputs. Each row represents a single envelope. Two controls are used to set settings on two adjacent envelope lanes. The first one being the generation mode of analog modeling or digital, and the EO switch which changes the fall shape to be either equal to the rise shape or opposite. So let's look at one individual lane. Really quickly, let's just go through the UI to understand what each of these inputs or controls mean. So the first is the trigger, which is used for triggering envelopes. We have an ADAR input, which is used to change whether we are in AD or AR mode. We have a CV input that's used to control the shape, along with a knob setting for controlling the shape. We have the radar switch, which switches between repeating AD or AR. We have an attack knob. We have a decay or release knob. We have an LED indicator, which shows us what the envelope is doing, and then finally an output. Let's look at each of these controls in more detail. Each channel has a CV controllable setting for shape. The CV input is an offset to the current setting so bipolar values are useful. Note that an external attenuator should be used to control the range of your modulation. This input was designed with an analog slewing circuit that limits discontinuities in the shape as the CV changes. You can select between logarithmic, linear, to exponential. The shape is interpolated between these settings. As mentioned earlier, the switch labeled EO can switch the falling waveforms to be either the same or opposite as the rising waveform. Opposite is like a traditional envelope capacitive charge discharge shape. Lanes can be operated in analog modeling or digital mode. In digital mode, as you change the envelope shape, frequency is held constant. In addition, if we had a trigger source, we can see that Digital envelopes will reset immediately to the beginning, even if that creates a discontinuity. In math, discontinuity is when a waveform jumps immediately from one value to another. In circuitry, this effect is normally realized as clicking. That said, the advantage to having the ability to reset back to the beginning is that your envelope is always starting exactly at the same time as the trigger is asserted. In analog, this behaves differently. Triggers control the virtual charging or discharging of a capacitor. So in the attack phase, the capacitor is charging. If a trigger comes in during this, nothing will happen. When we're in the release phase and the virtual capacitor is starting to discharge, a trigger will tell it to start charging again. This means in analog mode, we won't get any discontinuities. Frequency response in analog mode is not consistent. 
As you rotate through the values, you'll see the envelopes speed up or slow down. Well, right now we don't have the envelopes in their shortest time, which would be fully counterclockwise. You can still show that the fastest positions will be at the 6 o'clock shape setting or the 12 o'clock shape setting. And with attack and decay set to the fastest, you get about 1.18 kilohertz. In digital mode, that will be about 816 hertz is the fastest you can go. With the knobs fully turned clockwise, the slowest you can get for rise and fall added together is about 20 minutes in both modes. You'll notice that the LED for each lane is a bicolor indicator. Blue indicates we're in rise mode, Red indicates we're in fall mode, and purple is used to indicate one of three different things. One is that we are in hold mode for AR. Two is to let you know if you're using the OR output function of lanes four or eight, or your frequency is so fast on your envelope that the red and the blue are blending together. We'll cover this OR mode a little bit later. Also note that the outputs swing from 0 to 10 volts. So the next thing we want to look at is this AD or AR mode switch. So we're going to pull lane 1 into AD mode. So right now we don't have the trigger attached, so let's go ahead and attach that. And we're going to speed up our gate source. Okay, in attack decay, that indicates when a trigger is received that we will go through the complete attack and then the complete decay. If a new trigger comes in, what happens is relative to if it's an analog or digital mode as mentioned earlier. So if we slow this back down, you can see that in digital mode, it rises up, goes down, and then waits for the next. So if we go to AR mode and we change the pulse width of our digital signal, you're going to see that it will hold longer. Now if we were in AD, that just rise and then fall, but in AR, it stays high until the trigger goes low. Now, analog mode works a little differently than this. So in analog mode, when the trigger is longer than rise, it will work the same as digital. But when we get shorter, we switch out to the release mode. This is very expressive when you're using something that can control the length of the trigger. So you can basically change the level as well. Now, when you're in AD or AR mode, you can actually insert a gate signal into the ADAR jack here. That will override this setting, and a high value will put you in AR, and a low value will put you into AD. And you can use this to generate very rhythmic relationships between the envelope and a gate generator like GateStorm. Now one thing we want to talk about is these trigger inputs are normalized downwards. So that means if I plug in something into 1, it's going to trigger everything after it. So you can see if I go down into 2, now 1's not being triggered anymore. For this reason, it's recommended that if you're going to be sharing triggers that you load from the bottom up and skip a space if you want something to be controlling two of them. So here we can see 7 input is actually sending a trigger into 8 as well. 
This way your upper lanes can be free running if you want. The last thing we want to talk about is the OR mode on channels 4 and 8. So unlike some, I decided that OR made a lot more sense because what it does is so on output 4, it takes the max value of 3 and 4. And whatever one is max, that's what comes out 4. And likewise on 8, it is 6, 7, 8. Whatever the max value that is, that's what's going to come out on 8. That way you're not maxing out always when you're trying to add two things together. So let's play around with 4 and see what that looks like. So we'll switch the scope over to 4. And now we know that 4 is in repeating mode and 3 is in repeating mode. So we can mess with the timing. Let's take out the trigger because those are being triggered right now. Just to show you the difference. So we'll slow down three a little bit so you can see it riding on top of four. Just another way to generate complex shapes. And remember, you have that on both lane 4 and on lane 8. So as you can see, radar is pretty straightforward and gives you quite a bit of functionality. So to end out this video, I'll just start playing around with some of the settings and you can see what I have running. In this case, you're hearing um, sign sound coming out of an ER301 sound computer that I'm just using for a, a CV controllable sign. I'm using a Jupiter Storm to uh, generate different oscillations based on some CV inputs. I've got GateStorm generating some gates. VC8 is being used to modulate a couple signals together that are coming back in. And Levitate is being used to control the amplitude of signals coming out. So it's basically being used as attenuators. Thanks for watching.